Hello and welcome to this new ICT tutorial. In this tutorial we will be exploring mobile touch controls in Unity Games Engine. For this project I have Unity installed and I installed the Android SDK and JDK. If you don't have it set up please do so in order to follow along. Uh, we will jump right into the project. So this project that I have open we have got nine cubes that are inside of this scene. I have got two scripts that are attached to these. Uh, one script is attached to the camera and another script is attached to the cubes. But before we do anything else, let me just show you how this one works. So when I press play, I have got Android, um, an Android phone connected to the computer. And he has got the Unity Remote 5 installed as well. So when I press play, it should load up on the phone. Okay, so right now as you can see, it's playing here and it's loaded up on the phone as well. So um, now when I tap on a object, it changes color and it starts rotating. So I can tap on each of them and it will change color and it starts rotating. And when I tap again, it changes color again and it stops rotating. So what we have done here is uh, I've got a script that identifies the boxes that are inside the scene. And then another one that activates a script that's attached to the game object. So uh, I'm not using any assets from the asset store although there are really great ones available for mobile controls and so on but I just wanted to explore some of the fundamentals of it so in the future when we are exploring some more um, detailed and more functional games it would be a lot easier for me to sort of explain and for you to sort of understand what kind of things are going on in the background let's go and create a new unity project okay so I'm click on new Call this one call this one Unity Touch Controls Boxes No ICT and then we go and click create. Okay, so the project is now loaded. So if you look at the uh, project hierarchy, so the way I have got the Unity set up is I've got a game screen here, and obviously you've got your normal scene here that we can add, edit, and sort of see where the objects are. Uh, right now we have a main camera and a directional light only on the scene. But we need to change this one to a Android um, project. So I'm going to go here, go to build settings, click on Android and then click to switch platform. Okay. So once that finishes compiling, you should be able to see the uh, view changes. So the camera is going to be now used. Now in the game window, you should have in the display so inside the uh, resolution, you should have the aspect ratio for portrait and landscape. So we are okay with uh, 1280 by 720. So I want to make it into a portrait. So while we've got the camera selected here, we're just going to go and clear the sky box to a solid color. So as long as it's a solid color, it's easier to see the boxes on the scene. I'm going to go also here and make a new folder called scripts, where we will put the scripts for this project inside of this one. Okay, with that being done, so right now what we'll do is zoom out of this a little bit. So what we'll do right now is I'm going to first check if the project settings is correct because we need to run this on an Android device. So if you have got your SDK and JDK already um, installed, uh, inside the project settings, go to editor and then in Unity Remote, for the device you can just click on any Android device right and if you open the uh, unity remote 5 on your Android device and click play you should be able to load up so I'm just going to test that out very quickly so right now I can see this screen here on the phone so that's perfectly fine okay so that means everything's working as intended right so first thing we're going to add a 3d object I'm going to add a cube here the name cube is perfectly fine it's got a mesh collider it's got a box collider That's, those are the two things that we are definitely going to need uh, we're also going to need to have a sorry uh, so the position of this one right now is quite off so i'm going to go and reset the position to the middle of the screen so we can see it here okay so it's got a mesh collider and a box collider so mesh collider is what's in, uh, sort of uh, responsible for the design of it so you can add textures colors and uh, how the light reflects and so on and so forth uh, the box collider is the one it interacts with something 
um, colliding with the object so if you got heat testing for example and in this case we're going to be using a um, touch control so we do need a box collider attached to this object right uh, one other thing we're going to need to do is each object comes with a tag so uh, we can add a tag to this one so we can go to the inspector view and click on add tag here click on the little plus button there I'm going to call this one simply box click enter and then click on the box again and then you'll find the box is available now to be tagged to the object now make sure you frequently save the projects so I've made the mistake a few times where um, I've done a lot of work and I didn't save it and you know you know the, <laughs> you know the rest um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to change this one instead of this one being a um, object like in the hierarchy we also need to change it to a um, asset so like a prefab so that can be used repeatedly in the scene so what we'll do here first is we're going to attach a script to this one called rotate box so I'm going to click on the add component part here so if I click on the box oh, I think I opened something else um, if I click on the add component inside the inspector view and type in rotate box it says new script that's perfectly fine click on that and then click it click and create so it's going to create it on the main um, project view here right and secondly it's doing something all right okay so it has got the rotate box script attached to this now secondly we're going to go to click on that main camera and go to say add event and we're going to call this one touch box so just touch box new script touch box is fine click and add again so both of these scripts are now added and they've been attached to the objects that we need okay, so I'm going to select both of these scripts inside the project uh, window and I'm going to drag and drop it inside the scripts folder so that way the project stays nicely organized and we know where everything is basically okay so one more thing that we need to do is I'm going to drag and drop this cube to the project window so that way it creates a prefab of it. So I can still keep the, um, this one here on there. We could easily like you know duplicate it as well. But having a prefab actually gives us opportunity to change anything to it that will change to all of them that are existing in the scene. Okay, so now if I um, click on that and if I just press Control D twice, right, I have duplicated it. Right, so I'm going to go on there again and move that over as you can see on this window right, so if I select all three I'm going to move them up here duplicate it again move one down here duplicate it again and then move one down here so there's our nine prefabs that we need and each of them have got the rotate box script and the main camera has got the touch box script on there so first thing we need to do is let's start on the first script so the first script is going to be the rotate box one that we need to make okay, so if I double click on the rotate box okay, so once we open the script uh, mine will open with uh, Visual Studio code because that's how I got it set up and as you can see on the side here you have got the project and you have got both of these scripts available to you on the side inside the scripts folder so this is usually a good way to keep everything um, tidied up because then it makes it a lot easier for us to manage the projects because some of the unity projects can be um, you know really really big so because we're working on smaller projects at the moment it's best to keep things tidy so that way we don't lose track of what we are exactly doing okay so inside the rotate box one we're gonna first need to make four variables right so we're gonna make a float first float Okay, uh, call this one x speed equals to 0, 0.0f. Okay, so this one here is going to be controlling the speed of the x value for the boxes, right? And then we're going to make another float called y speed equals 0, 0.0f. So these are all the default values. Float z speed because we're dealing with three dimensional objects. Okay, and we also need a boolean called rotate me equals false. So 
because each, this script is attached to each of the boxes so we can in, um, set them individually to say whether this one has been activated or not okay. so the star function um, is what is called in the beginning so when the object actually loads in the first frame it will load it up so it's usually a good idea to set things up in here if you need to but for this one we don't really need to set anything up but we, we will need the update function so update is going to be called once per frame so each time the update timer ticks is going to run this function here and we also need to have another public function that's going to change the rotate me either to true or false okay so let's do that one first that's a quick one so public void change pool okay and in this one we just say rotate me is equals to rotate me false okay so if it is true it's going to change it to false if it's false it's going to change it to true so that's one of the easiest ways to get the boolean to swap values All right okay so and also inside the update function let's go and change that now so we're going to say here if right so if, if, it's a, if rotate me is true Okay, if rotate me is true, then y speed is going to be equals to say 40. Okay, so we want only want to rotate this one in one direction at the moment. Okay, else we're going to say y speed is equals to zero. So you know if it's true, if it changes um, the y speed to 40, and then if it's not, it changes it back to zero. So that way, it's not uh, once it's activated, it's not continuously rotating. Okay, and now we need to do the animation right here. So inside the game, inside each game object, we have got a, a property called transform, and then inside of that, you can go access the rotate part. Okay, and then I'm going to make this one slightly larger so we can see this. Okay, so inside the rotate one, we it accepts three different values. So you can have x y and z which part of the rotation that we are interested in so we're going to say here x speed right uh, times time dot delta time okay oh, comma a semicolon y speed times time dot delta time as well and then z speed the same Okay, and the last one doesn't need a comma. Okay, so with that done, that should be able to. Sounds very open for us. Okay, and so if I change this one to public for now, so that way we can we have access to it in the inspector and we should be able to see it. Okay, let the scripts compile. Okay, so if I click on the cube now, right, so when you go to the rotate me screen, so you can see the rotate me option here that is available for us to select or deselect, right? So if I run this app now, okay, because we don't have any touch controls at the moment, but I just want to show you what this actually does. So if I click on the rotate me box here, so that's going to change it to true. So as you can see now, that this box here is starting to rotate. So if I click on even on this one, and then change that to true that one will start to rotate right so we have got a script that's attached to a box and then what we're going to do is once that um, once we touch on that or tap on the object we will activate that script specifically we will activate this function in that script so we're going to access a another script attached to another object and we'll activate a script sorry activate a function from that script Okay, so with that being done now, uh, let's go back to Visual Studio uh, code and start working on the touch box. So what we'll do here is, for this one, we don't need to do any variables, so we can work inside the update function here. Okay, so first thing first is we're going to need an if statement. So we're going to say if input... Touch count is greater than zero, 
and Touch is zero, so that the first touch that we have phase is equals equals touch phase dot began. Okay, so if we have touched the screen, so we're looking at the first one, and then after with the first one, if it has begun, so if the touch has actually begun on the screen, so if Unity has detected the touch has begun, then we can do the following inside of it. So first thing first is we're going to need a ray. Let's call this one ray here and then say camera dot main lowercase dot screen to ray. Okay and then we shall go and find the input dot touches let's go to zero first one and then we access the position of that touch so whatever that touch was um, activated. Okay, and then we can go say here ray cast hit. Call this one hit like so. And then we can say a if statement here. To say if physics dot ray cast. And instead of here, I'm gonna say ray, which is that first one here, right? So that's the input, and then we're gonna we are interested in the output, which is gonna be the hit. Oh. Not the HD display. <laughs> hit. Okay. So something that hits an object, and then we need to figure out whether the object has responded back to us. Okay. Now um, we can access all sorts of things with this hit. Rake has hit one here. So that's what we're going to do right now. So the reason we added a tag to each of them is because so we can access that object from the script. Okay. So you need to do your thing. Then let's go here. <clears throat> so now we're going to say hit dot transform dot tag right equals equals box. So something that has got a tag for box. And now if something that we hit returns the tag right. So if something that we hit has got the tag for box, we can simply say now color new color equals to new color like so. And we can randomly generate a RGB value inside of here. Okay, so let's say random dot range, uh, you know, from 0 0.0f to 1.0f. Okay, so it's going to randomly generate a value from 0, 0.0 to 1. Okay, and we can say that's for the red, that's for the green, and that's for the blue. Actually hide that so you can see the code better, I hope. Okay, so I just copied and pasted this part here because it just needs to do the same three times in there. Okay. So with that being done, now I'm gonna say hit dot collider dot get component. So I'm going to get the get component mesh renderer. Okay. And dot material dot color okay and then we see we're going to attach the new color to this one so the mesh renderer that's attached to the object right has got a material and a color property and then we're just going to change the color property to the new color that we have generated here okay what we also need to do is now we need to access this script from that object so we're going to do the same thing again say hit dot collider dot get component Right, and then now we're gonna say rotate box. So as you can see, rotate box comes up on the suggestions, right? And then that function here, and we can we are able to access the change bool function from there. Okay, that's because the change bool function is a public one. So if I change that to a private right now, let's say for example, and if I go back to the script here, that's going to give a error because inaccessible due to the protection level, right? So if you don't want a particular function to be accessed from another script, you can change it to private. But because we do, we can leave it to public. So don't leave any functions unnecessarily public in your script. That's about all we need for the camera script. So what we've done here is we've done an if statement to see if the touch count and the touch has begun, creating a ray and the ray cast hit, 
right checking out the input and the output from the raycast seeing if the raycast actually hit a object with the tag called box if it has generated new random um, color so the red green and blue values attach the find the mesh renderer and attach the new color right and then obviously find the uh, rotate box script that's attached to the object and run the change bool function so that way the box will start rotating um, when the boolean is true and it will stop rotating when the boolean is false so now with both of the scripts done right I have got unity remote 5 loaded and we're gonna press play so um, when I press play on this one I should load up the project okay so as you can see I can tap on the objects now and then they change color and they start rotating so if I click on the object as you can see here the rotate me is now activated so I just need to see which one it is is the top corner one right so if I click on tap on that one again just keep an eye on the box here so see it changes it back and then if it happening again it activates it so when it's activated it changes it to um, rotate the box because that's what we're doing in the update function here right and once it's not activated uh, we change it back to stop rotating okay so I'm gonna leave one out so one of the reasons that we use the tag function right so if I remove one of the tags from one of them so say the middle one here I'm gonna leave it to untagged although it's got the script attached to it right I'm gonna try and run it again okay so I'm gonna so as you can see I can tap on all of them except for the middle one that's because the tag doesn't work so because it's not tagged right that's why it's not going to work so but if I do while the program is running if I try to tag that one and then tap it yeah, as you can see that works but if I untag it then it's just going to do its thing and I'm not going to stop if I try it so this is one of the ways that if you want certain game objects to be selected and certain game objects not to be selected you can do uh, you can use the similar methods as this one I will put both of the scripts uh, available on the website and the link is in the description below hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you on the next one